Hello everyone, I am Dr. Ratnav Ratan, Consultant Pediatric Orthopedics and Sports Injury Specialist at Apple Gurugram. So today uh, I thought of uh, talking about a very uh, relatively uncommon disorder but it's relatively concerning for the parents as well as for the pediatrician. So the disorder is known as arthrogryposis. It is a cluster of disorders of around 400 to 500 disorders which are mostly genetic disorders and they cause congenital deformities in the limbs. So when a child is born in an arthrogapotic kid, we will usually see the child to have very stiff deformed feet or the knee which is either bent completely or is in the other way, is in the other direction that means hyperextended knee or the hips which are out. So you know it's, it's uh, devastating for any parent or any family to have a child like that and to be born with such grotesque deformities. And these, these kids also have deformities in the upper limbs in terms of uh, the bent wrist, the you know the bent fingers, the stiff elbow like this, and the you know the wrist kept like this. So these are all uh, possibilities the, the arthrogapotic deformities, and uh, they are usually genetic deformities which causes contractures, intrauterine contractures. Uh, in the child, this is uh, this has been linked to fetal echinacea, where the child is not moving properly inside the womb during pregnancy because of some or the other reason, either genetic problems or because of some underlying disorder with the mother. If the child doesn't move uh, adequately, these child end up with uh, joint contractures, intrauterine, and can also end up with uh, dislocated hips within the womb itself. So when these kids are born. Uh, they have uh, you know very stiff deformed joints as we talked about. So you know if you talk about the incidence this is a relatively rare disorder because it's, it's a basically a cluster of disorder this is not one disease there, there are many genetic syndromes in it. So you know it has been classified as a myoplasia, distal arthrogryposis and multiple other neuromuscular causes. So it's a disorder of the muscles of the nerves and of course of some of the malformation of the central nervous system which can cause all these problems. There can be multiple diagnoses causing uh, an arthrogryposis. So its incidence is about uh, you know uh, 1 in 3000 live births uh, is the tentative uh, incidence and uh, emioplasia which is a more common type of uh, arthrogryposis has an incidence of about 1 in 10,000 live births. So, Every 10,000 live birth, you may have a child with a myoplasia. So, what we commonly see is uh, the more common presentation will be a, a club foot which is extremely stiff and the foot is turned inwards and upwards, or the, that is the classical club foot kind of arthrogapotic presentation. Then, the other type is where the foot is turned inwards, which is an equinocavus type of club foot. So, these two are the type of feet deformities. The knee may be completely dislocated in the other side, on the other side. So they are mostly because of the contractures of the muscles on the front of knee. They are because of the quadriceps contracture. So then uh, the hips may be dislocated at birth. So they are mostly teratologic hip dislocations. That means hips which are going out within the womb. So they are again a challenge to, to manage. So uh, then these kids may have problems uh, of the upper limbs as we spoke about. Now, why we need to, you know, discuss because, you know, whenever these uh, parents or pediatricians are encountered with such problems, they're always in a dilemma where to go because there are not many places where these deformities are treated. So it's important to, you know, uh, give them proper information to tell them that these deformities are correctable to a great extent and these kids can uh, have a normal life like other kids despite having genetic problems. So treated at birth, once the treatment is started at birth, they are very likely to have a, a normal life and a, you know a normal um, playful life like, a, like other kids. So um, as we spoke about the various deformities, the treatment protocol in general depends on the type of presentation of the child, whether the child is presenting with either the knee problem or the foot problem or the hip problems. So we usually manage them step by step at birth, we usually start with plasters for the foot deformities you know some tenotomies, some cut tenotomies of the tendons then uh, the hip needs to be managed at a later date. The knee deformity if it is an extended knee then that knee needs to be brought down with serial plasters or sometimes even surgical interventions. Now at around one, one year of birth we usually intervene for the hips they need to be put back into the socket but usually by surgical intervention because they do not usually 
uh, reduce closed by plasters. So uh, these are this is the way we usually manage these kids. And uh, you know, in earlier years, it was considered that arthro an arthrogapatic kid having a dislocated hip or a deformed feet cannot be corrected, or they they should be left alone. I think that concept has changed now. Uh, by reducing the hip early at around one one and a half years of age, we can give them a, a good ambulation, a pain-free hip, and you know, uh, a life like other kids. So uh, the management, of course, as I said, depends on the type of presentation. Then if, we, if the child also has upper limb involvement, the child may need uh, releases on the back of the elbow to, ex uh, you know, to, to be able to flex the elbow. Then they may need splintage at birth to correct their wrist deformity, which is usually their wrist is kept like this. Now these kids also have a deformity where the thumb is kept like this. This is called the thumb and palm deformity or you can always have a you know, a bend at the finger, at the metacarpophalangeal joint, it's called as the camptodactyly. So these are common deformities which are corrected subsequently after, you know, the lower limb deformities are, are managed. But yes, uh, the, uh, the message here is that everything is correctable. The, these, these kids should have uh, proper pediatric orthopedic consultation along with that sometimes plastic surgical intervention may be required to release the thumb deformities. So that is how we usually manage these kids and the prognosis usually depends on the underlying disorder. If there is no genetic problem or no malformation of the brain, these kids usually do well. So the uh, prognosis depends on the, on the underlying disease process, underlying genetic condition, whether the child is uh, having a malformation of the brain or the spinal cord. If they are not there and there are only joint contractures, we can usually manage them with plasters and some surgical interventions to make the joint relatively supple and to have a normal gait. So uh, that is how we manage these arthrogapatic kids. They should not leave uh, hope. These kids can be managed very well. Post-operatively, there are chances of recurrence. The only concern with these kids are even if we correct the deformity in one, one and a half years of age, first one, one and a half years of age, the deformity especially of the knee, of the hip and the, you know, the foot, they can recur. So they need to be kept under close follow-up, they need to be observed, they need to be splinted properly, bracing needs to be done so that you know the tendency, the natural tendency of the feet to turn in uh, later on as well doesn't you know again recur the deformity. So it's important to uh, you know have a follow-up, splintage, nighttime splints till you know 14, 15 years or till maturity, sexual maturity of the kind of the child. So that is how we manage the kids and uh, there is no reason to do, uh, to lose hope because uh, you know we can definitely correct all of the all of the deformities and give the child a normal life thank you